listeners, good morning, afternoon, or evening. What a joy it is to have you here today to flow together. The theme of today's class is balance, which we will be practicing both internally and externally through our poses. So right off the bat, if you want to take a minute, pause this video, grab something that you can have nearby to help and assist with balance postures. By all means, you can also at any point grab one during the flow. So whatever makes this the most comfortable and accessible flow for you today. After all, this is a practice. So falling out of things are very, it's very encouraged. That's how we learn. So let's go ahead team and make our way down to child's pose. Toes together, knees at the edge of our mat, stretching our hands out, taking a moment in this posture that starts to close off through the external and bring us into that internal messaging. So first, just allowing your mind to start focusing on the breath. As always, this focus varies from day to day, person to person. So just allowing yourself rather than approaching with any judgment to approach as an observer. An observer of what's going on today with your mind, an observer of how you're feeling in your body, an observer of the quality of breath, and just slowly detaching from these stories that throughout our day can sometimes start to take all of our focus and pull us out of that balance. When we're stuck in the past or focusing on something that's to come, it's pulling us out of the balance of the present moment. So today's practice, while physical, I also gently invite you to keep this observation going of our internal balance. Stretching the fingertips, inhaling, filling the belly with air, open mouth, exhale, let it go. Again, inhaling here in the present, just bringing yourself into the moment, little hold at the top, and then exhale, just physically letting go of anything that might be pulling that mind out of balance. On our next inhale, start to extend the fingertips even further, drawing ourselves up into a tabletop position. Taking a moment to stack the joints, shoulders over wrists, knees below hips. And then when you're feeling ready, inviting a little cat cow. Inhale, dropping the belly, heart shining forward. Exhale, rounding through the spine. Right away noticing that we're already practicing balance. Every pose we do, every stretch, we hold has a counter pose, a pose that brings the body back to neutral, back to that balance. Cat cow is a very tangible metaphor for feeling those oppositions work together to find our healthiest, most balanced self. If we only did cat, we would probably feel a lot of low back pain over the compression over time. If we did just a ton of cat, or excuse me, that was cow, we did a bunch of cat, our shoulders would be rounded. Too much of anything ends up being problematic. So here in our yoga practice, we explore the balance. As you find your next cat, start to circle your ribs around to the left, inhaling down through center, exhaling over to the right and up through cat. Starting to find this circular motion in our rib cage. So circular cat cow, nice and slow, playing around. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look perfect. Just trying. For some of us, this might be the first time circling. So just exploring what this feels like. When you find your next cat shape, other direction, ribs over to the right, heart shining forward through cow, up and around to the left. Getting and creating a little bit of space through those ribs, through that side body. 
through the tops of the hips. Next time you find your way through to cat position, taking a moment to ground through the hands. We're gonna spend just a moment awakening the core. So shoulders down our back, rib cage is engaged. Extend your right arm out past your ear and your left toe straight back. Thinking inner thigh wrapping up to the sky, tailbone tipping, nice deep inhale. Exhale, set it down back to neutral. Inhale, left arm, right thigh, big stretch, fingertips and toes reaching apart. Exhale, back to center. Alternating with your own breath to movement, noticing as you extend your leg, if you can really focus on tipping the tailbone up towards the bottom of the ribs, rather than allowing the extension of the leg to drop the belly. Really finding that neutral space between the cat and the cow of a nice engaged core, long neutral spine, eyes make our way to the top of the mat so we can have a nice neutrality all the way up to the base of the head. Beautiful. Let's go one more each side and as you finish that second side, gently coming back into your tabletop position. Taking a moment to ground, maybe shaking out, getting any sort of wiggles that might have arisen from that core activation. And then gently walking your fingertips a few inches forward, flipping the toes, nice deep inhale. Exhale, hips reach to the sky. Taking a moment in this first downward facing dog to really, again, just arrive into this shape. Fingertips are spread, pressing down through the finger pads, lifting through the inner hands, shifting side to side, whatever feels good. Taking a moment to observe if maybe we started to hold the breath and just invite that inhale and exhale back. Coming to arrive back in center here on your inhale, stretch the heels up, feel the calves engage, exhale, release the heels towards the floor. As always, you never have to stretch the heels all the way down. We're working our body, our rules. Again, inhale, stretch. Exhale, reaching the heels down towards the ground. From here, really rooting through the hands, core is engaged. We're gonna float our right toes and we're gonna work on that calf raise from our left foot alone. So inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Core is tight, just starting to turn on the foot and the calf here. We have a lot of balancing like we talked about and balance starts with our foundation and our foundation of our movement is our foot. So just getting a little bit of strength here and setting it back down. I should mention too, if it's not comfortable to go just one, feel free to stick with both feet in that calf raise. Starting to float the left foot, let's calf raise through the right. Right away, starting to tune in to what might be going on in our minds, seeing if we have any thoughts or judgments around what's happening. And again, reminding ourselves, we are the observer. We are not defined by these thoughts. Can we let them just float on by. Beautiful. Coming back to center. One more inhale. Heels lift. Eyes peek up at the top of your mat. Tiptoeing up to the feet. Come right behind the palms. Finding our ragdoll. <sighs> Big bend in the legs. Reaching for opposite elbows. Little sway. Little swing. Just letting everything get heavy and melt towards the floor. When you're ready, start to gently release the fingers, keeping a nice deep bend in the knees, squeezing the glutes, starting to roll one vertebra at a time, all the way up to standing, shoulders rolling up, back and down. Inhale, we stretch overhead, exhale, forward fold. And as we come into our forward fold, think of lifting the heels and dropping the hips, making a tiny little ball, pressing down through big toe pad, little toe pad, and then inhale, drop the heels, Exhale, halfway lift, shoulders pull back, core engaged. Inhale, release. Exhale, sweep it on up. Gorgeous. Inhale, we stretch. Exhale, we swan dive forward. Coming up onto the toes, dropping the hips, tiny little balls, playing around with again, turning on through the foot, inhaling, dropping the heel. Exhale, halfway lift. Inhale, release. Exhale, sweeping it up one more time here. Inhale, we stretch. Exhale, hips go back as we swan dive forward, lifting the heels, dropping the hips, tiny little balls, equal weight on big toe and little toe mound. Inhale, and we drop the heels. Exhale, halfway lift, shoulders down the back. Inhale, stretch. 
exhale, sweeping arms up, and then starting to bring the arms right in front of our shoulders, like little Frankenstein arms. So our feet are hip width distance. First, we're just going to practice sitting back into our chair. So keeping the arms out, we're just going to extend our hips back, lowering gently to whatever feels good here, squeezing through the glutes, little hover, weight is in those heels, core is engaged. Nice deep breath in. Exhale, squeezing the butt, heels pull apart energetically, come back to standing. We're gonna do this one more time. So engaging through the shoulders, option to keep your heels on the floor or if you'd like to start playing around with the balance, lifting up onto the toes and playing around with sitting back into this chair. Again, right away reminding ourselves, it's a balance practice, not a balance perfect. So when we're on the toes, if this is the option we're going for, we don't wanna feel this in the knees, our hips are back. Again, always an option to take it to the heels. This is a lot of balance right off the back. You can always have something next to you to balance. Whether your heels are up or down, so just squeeze the glutes, driving through the hips all the way up to standing and then release the heels, shake it out and give yourself a big hug for trying something that is a little bit challenging. Bring the soles of the feet together if that feels okay. Big toe touches, little space between the heels. Inhale, stretch the arms up. Exhale, sitting back into Utkasana chair pose. Rib cage pulls in nice and tight. Inhale, finding length in the spine. Exhaling, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, heart shines forward. Exhale, stepping our right knee back, dropping the knee to the earth. Inhaling, sweeping the arms up, low lunge. So pulling that left hip back, squeezing our right glute forward, sending our right knee over that right toe, feeling a nice deep stretch in our right thigh. Inhale, we stretch. Exhale, frame that left foot, coming back to your downward facing dog. Nice deep inhale, we lift the heels, shift forward into high plank. Exhale, dropping the knees, lowering chest, chin. Inhaling, coming all the way through, squeezing the glutes, baby cobra, shoulder blades squeezed together. Inhale, release. Exhale, pressing through child's pose, back up to our downward facing dog. Inhale, lifting the heels, eyes to the top of the mat. Baby step all the way forward, feet to touch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, dropping the hips, sweeping the hands up. Utkatasana chair pose. Nice deep breath here. Exhale, heart through center, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, left foot back this time, dropping through that back knee. Nice deep inhale as we spiral that left hip back, right hip forward. Exhale, extend. Nice deep inhale as we feel the stretch in the front of that left thigh. Exhale, planting our hands, framing that front foot, plugging our toes down in the back, stepping into our down dog. Inhale, lifting the heels, shifting through to high plank, feeling the core engaged. Knees drop, exhale, we drop heart, chin, Inhale, we sweep it forward into our baby cobra. Maybe float the hands this time as we squeeze the glutes. Inhaling, release. Exhaling, pressing back through tabletop into our downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the heels, eyes forward. Exhale, making our way to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, dropping the hips, arms sweeping up, chair pose. Nice deep inhale as we settle legs, squeeze together energetically. Exhale, heart through our hands through heart center. Forward fold, release. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, right foot steps back, low lunge. We inhale, sweeping it up on that exhale. Inhale, big stretch, get a little bit longer in that side body. Exhale, frame that left foot, plug the back toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, shifting it through to our plank position, this time dropping the knees, or if you're feeling warm, flow through chaturanga into your up dog variation, or we're taking knees into baby cobra, all finishing meeting back in that beautiful down dog. Nice deep inhale, heels lift, eyes gaze forward, making it to the top of our mat. Inhale, release. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, inner thighs together, heels apart energetically, drop the hips, chair pose. Nice deep inhale as we settle. Exhale, hands through heart center as we release to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. 
Inhale, left foot drives back towards the floor, sweeping the arms up, finding a moment to arrive. Inhale, big stretch. Exhale, frame that front foot, stepping back through to our downward facing dog. Inhale, has us rolling forward into our plank. Exhaling from the knees or the toes through chaturanga. Ex inhaling rather up through downward, upward facing dog, baby cobra. Exhaling into our downward dog. One more time through each flow, my friends. Inhale, lift the heels, eyes forward. Step or float to the top of the mat, arriving. Inhale, we halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhales, hip drops, thighs squeeze together as we find that chair position. Exhale, release, hands through heart center. Halfway lift, setting it down. Inhale, stepping that right foot back, squeezing it up. This time we're gonna find eagle arms. So we're gonna wrap the right arm underneath the left, coming to press the right fingertips into the left palm. If this range of motion doesn't feel available or good today, just take your opposite hands, opposite elbows, or excuse me, shoulders, give yourself that little hug. If you're in those eagle arms, press the palms together, feel the elbows pull apart energetically, little lift up, baby back bend, and then drop the elbows down, stretching through the tops of the shoulders. Nice deep breath here. One more nice deep inhale. We level out the arms. Exhale, sweep the arms back up. Beautiful. Dropping the hands, framing the foot, shifting back, finding your down dog. On your next inhale, we float forward, exhaling from our knees or from our toes through our vinyasa flow. Arriving in down dog, we inhale, eyes forward, step or float up to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, sweeping it into chair. This pose feels more and more familiar each time. Exhaling through center. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, left foot steps back, finding our low lunge, stretching up. And this time, left elbow wraps underneath our right again. If eagle arms feels like it's not supportive to our bodies today, we'll take opposite hand, opposite shoulders. Nice deep breath in as the palms press together, elbows pull apart, core is engaged. We inhale, squeeze the glute as we lift the elbows. Exhale, centering our chest back out, bringing the elbows towards our belly button, feeling the stretch in the top of the shoulders. In our ninth, next inhale, we re-elevate the hands. Exhale, unwrap, big stretch. Inhale, plant the hands, lift the heels, step it back. Inhale, shifting through, final vinyasa flow for now. Exhaling down, inhaling through your back bend. Nice deep inhale, we extend the hips. And exhale, making our way back to the top of the mat. Nice deep inhale here. Exhale, halfway lift. Inhale, release. This time we sweep all the way up to standing and bring our hands to our hips. Taking a second here, closing down the eyes. Reconnecting with that breath. Reconnecting through the feet. Reconnecting through the glutes, the core. Ears in line with shoulders, crown of the head extending towards our ceilings. Allowing our body to shift gear from our sun salutations where we create a little bit of heat and energy and start to stabilize so we can channel that heat and energy into the strength of our balances. When you're ready, feel your left heel ground down. So both sides of the heel, big toe, little toe, lift up onto the toes of your right foot and then all the way up into your single leg mountain pose. When we set up with our single leg mountain pose, sometimes it can feel a little counterintuitive but the higher that knee is, the more engagement we get through the core. So if our leg's down, we might fall out a little bit. So if you're feeling wobbly, you can always, of course, have a wall or a chair, but also just think of elevating a little bit more, scooping through that belly button. We're gonna start crossing, so turning out through the hip, bringing, I'm gonna face you guys, bringing that foot above the thigh. You can keep the hand here and just practice opening up through the hip this way, or you can grab something to balance on, or maybe you go without, starting with 
a hinge in the hips, we're gonna do our standing figure four. So this can feel like a pretty big bend, and if it isn't supportive today, go ahead and shake it out and just rock that chair pose. But if you feel like you are available through the hips this morning, afternoon, or evening, gently play around with experimenting with our standing figure four. So flexing through the right foot, drawing back through the left hip. There are other variations of this, so if your practice involves a toe stand or hands on the ground, by all means, go for it. Nice deep inhale, feeling the left foot engage with the floor. Remember our balance, our base, our foundation starts with the earth. Nice deep inhale. Exhale slowly and wind, doing our best to come back up to that single leg Tadasana. Take a moment to peek down at your left foot and make sure that it's still parallel with the outside of your mat, so straight forward. Nice deep inhale here. I'm gonna go down here so I can face you guys. Nice deep inhale. And then on our exhale, we're gonna open up into our warrior two, gently stepping all the way back. Our right foot is gonna go parallel with the back of the mat, bending through that left leg. Nice deep inhale, feeling the inner arch of our right foot and heel of our left foot pull together, turning on through our low core, turning on through our inner thighs. Inhale, stretch, exhale, settle. On your next inhale, flip the left palm and exhale, dancing it back through our reverse warrior. Inhale, settles us deeper into this position. Exhale, stretches a little bit higher. On your next inhale, start spiraling the arms back, extending through that left leg. And exhale, taking the hips to the right, arm down, left arm towards the floor, so we have our triangle pose. This is another opportunity if you have a block or a water bottle you'd like to rest your hand on. Otherwise, you can go ahead and hold using the core. Nice deep breath. We're gonna set up for a reverse triangle. So if you need a prop to bring the floor a little bit closer to you, by all means, we're gonna start rotating our torso down towards the floor, reaching our right hand for the ground and our left hand for the sky. Again, everybody's ranges of motion are gonna be quite different here. So think of grounding down through that right foot, knife edge of the foot towards the mat. Always an option to grab a water bottle to lift the floor towards you. Nice, deep inhale. Exhale, starting to rotate again, sending the right hands down, left arm up. One more nice, deep inhale in Trikonasana. Exhale, re-bending through that left leg, finding that warrior two, beautiful. Nice, deep inhale here, and on our exhale, we're gonna spiral to the toes on the back leg, coming to our crescent lunge. Taking a moment to set this up, you can put your hands on your hips to make sure everything is even. You can bend through the back leg and re-lengthen. Finding a nice deep inhale here. On our exhale, we're gonna find eagle arms, right arm coming underneath that left, setting up for eagle. We can always go for the shoulders. Nice deep inhale here. Exhale, a little lift of the heart. Keep spiraling those inner thighs together. On your next inhale, start to really shift forward your weight into your front foot, picking up slowly the back leg, finding our way into warrior three with eagle arms. We can always extend the hands to the floor for supported warrior three, we can always bring our hands to a table or a block next to us, or we can work on these eagle arms. Nice deep breath in here. Extend that foot back. On your exhale, start to stand up and through single leg mountain pose. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, ground through that left foot. Extend back into warrior three. Remembering, balance is a practice. It is a journey. Some days our balance is on point. Inhale, coming back to warrior two, squeezing through the glutes. Sometimes our balance needs a little bit of love. This particular move is quite intense on the glutes and hamstrings. I'm unwinding for a little extra balance. Again, if you need to, you can keep your left hand on an anchoring point as you find this sweep. One more standing Tadasana. One more warrior three, beautiful team. Be so proud of yourself for finding these new and challenging shapes and then release your fingertips. Take your right foot behind your left foot, little bend in the right knee, release forward. So we're feeling a big stretch in the outside of that right thigh. In through the nose, exhale, let it out the mouth. Taking a moment here to settle that nervous system and taking a moment to be proud of ourselves and reminding ourselves that we don't get to a place of balance without falling a few times. Nice deep inhale, we halfway lift. Exhale, we unwind the feet, coming back through center, release. 
Inhale, sweeping the arms up, dropping the hip as we find our chair pose. Exhale, hands through heart center. On our next inhale, we'll find length in the spine and we'll start to twist our left elbow to the outside of our right thigh. Take a peek down, make sure one knee isn't sneaking out in front of the other, that we're dialing that right shoulder down our ribs, trying to shift the thumbs to our sternum. Nice deep inhale, hips drop a little lower so our hips are always lower than our heart. And exhale, release, shake it out, beautiful team. I'm gonna come back up here, we're going inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, sweeping it all the way up and bringing hands back on those hips. Taking a moment here, maybe wiggle the toes, ground the feet, shake out that leg if you got a little bit stiff on the left side. And then giving yourself a moment to reset. This time, thinking of grounding through that right foot, all four corners of the foot, big toe, little toe, both sides of the heel. And on your next inhale, we start to lift the left heel and then find our single leg mountain pose, flexing through that foot. This is a perfectly wonderful place to stay. If you'd like to go for the figure four on this side, by all means, we gently lift the heel, setting it gently across our leg, so never on our knee joint, but rather on the thigh. And on our inhale, we start to hinge our hips, exhaling, setting up into this stretch. Always staying incredibly flexed through the left foot, that's gonna protect our knee joint. And then thinking of drawing that right hip back, eyes staying forward. Breathing, maybe holding on to a wall or a seat to balance. If you have toe stands or balances in your practice, by all means, feel free to explore them. Nice deep inhale, exhale, sitting just a little bit lower, feeling your left, excuse me, right foot connecting to the floor, the center and root of that balance. Big inhale. Exhale, coming back, unwinding into single leg mountain pose. Taking a moment to take a peek at your right foot, making sure that it is straight ahead as we inhale, lengthen. Exhale, opening up through the hips, stepping back into warrior two on our right side. Arms stretching apart, knife edge side of that left foot, pressing down. Our right heel is anchored knee, traveling towards our toe, inner thighs on fire as we pull the heel and inner foot together, big breath in, exhale, arrive. Inhale, flip that right foot, exhale, maintaining the bend in that front leg, sweep up, up, up and over like you're high-fiving the back wall. Nice deep inhale as we stretch, exhale as we commit to that bend. On our next inhale, we start to straighten through that right leg, coming up with straight arms, sending our hips back towards the left, Exhaling our fingertips forward, Trikonasana triangle pose. Again, always an option to grab a prop if you need it for your hand to bring the floor a little closer, a block, a water bottle, a book. Nice deep inhale, thinking of lifting away from the floor with the rib cage, exhale. On our next inhale, we start to rotate our torso down, framing that front foot. I extend my left arm down and I exhale, right fingertips up to the sky for a rotating triangle. This one can be a pretty challenging balance. Our body is in a position it's not very often in. So again, allowing yourself that grace just to explore the shape. Take away the shoulds of what it should and should not be and allow it to be exactly what it is and learn from this. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, re-rotating through the foot, finding triangle pose, grounding through that right heel, grounding through the back foot. Nice deep inhale and exhale, gently start to re-bend through the right leg, finding our warrior two. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, start dialing up to the toe of that left foot, taking a moment to set up crescent. So again, hands can come down to the hips. You can play around with bending the knee and extending, keeping the heel in line with toe and coming high on the back foot. Inhale, find length, dial that right hip back, inner thigh spiral together, exhale, left arm comes underneath, the right for eagle arms. Again, option to give yourself that little hug. Nice deep inhale here. Exhale, squeeze the glutes, lift the heart, lift the gaze. Inhale, recenter. On our next breath, we start to drag that back foot forward as we start to hinge forward into our warrior three eagle arms. Shoulders back and together. Think of flexing through that left foot, 
inner thighs spiraling up. We can always bring the hands to the floor or to a prop to help us play with this balance. Releasing the eagle arms whenever we need. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, sweeping it up into our single leg mountain pose. Again, if we need a little bit of assistance, nice deep inhale. Hand is on either a chair, a wall, as we find this movement. Again, really targeting through the glute and the hamstring of that right leg. Nice deep inhale, exhale, sweeping it up, grounding through all four corners of that right foot. And exhale. Beautiful. One more nice deep inhale, last time here. Exhale, finding our warrior three. And then slowly release, bringing that left leg behind the right, little bend in that right knee, taking a moment to feel a stretch in the left leg and just finding some gratitude for your body showing up, showing up and exploring. You are amazing, our bodies are amazing. One more nice deep inhale as we halfway lift. Exhale, unwinding the feet, bringing big toes together. Inhale, settle. Exhale, sweeping the arms up, finding our chair pose. Nice deep inhale here at the bottom. Exhale, standing it up. Big stretch. And then let's find our chair pose one more time here. Inhale, settling down, hands through heart center. This time extending through the torso, bringing our right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Thumbs find their way to our sternum. We take a peek to make sure our right knee isn't popping out more than our left. Thinking about hips dropping below the heart. Inner thighs squeezing together energetically. Eyes gazing up to the sky. Left shoulder out of our ear and down our back. Beautiful team. One more nice deep inhale. Exhale. Let it go forward. Fold. Shake it out. Beautiful. Nice deep inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale. Release. Inhale, sweeping the arms up and shake it on out. We have a little bit of a balancing practice today. So our posture is going to be eagle pose. We've been setting up both with our lunges, our legs, and our arms. So now we're going to bring it all together. And as always with any posture, but especially with balancing, I like to remind you to just go wherever you're at today. Whatever you take from this is going to be amazing. There is no wrong choice. So we're all going to begin with a slight bend in our knees, finding our chair pose. From here, we're gonna go ahead and take right arm under left arm, sitting back into our chair. This is a perfect place to stay. You can already feel the heat. You can work on scooping the core, feeling the engagement. When we build this strength in our quads, we are building our balances. If you'd like to play a little further, start to come up to the toes of the right foot and gently squeeze the leg across. From here, you can keep the foot in a kickstand, sitting back into your left leg. If you'd like to explore further, Play around with wrapping the toes behind the calf. Whichever variation you choose, I encourage you to pick something on the floor or the wall that doesn't move as your drishti, that focal point. From here, nice deep inhale, lift the elbows and breathe. We're here for a little while, so by all means, feel free to drop the toe and kickstand to come back to the chair variation. Moving through balance in our body, finding ways to get through the more challenging postures, our transferable skills when we get off the mat and take, find moments in life that might be a little bit more challenging. We breathe through them, we reset, we assess and meet ourselves where we are at. Taking care of ourselves allows us to show up in a big way in our world. One more nice deep inhale, exhale, unwinding, shake it out. So good team, really, really nice. Coming back into the reset, finding a nice deep stretch up, inhale. Exhale, sitting back into our chair pose. Grabbing the left arm underneath the right or for those shoulders. Again, what a perfect place to stay and work on strength. If you'd like to explore further, lifting up, sliding the left leg across the right, kick standing the foot, sitting back into the hips, and maybe play around with sliding the foot onto the calves. Woo! One side is usually very different from the other. And again, just allowing that to be okay. Shoulders down the back, core is tight. At any point, you can choose any other variation. And if you're afraid of trying a posture because you're worried you're gonna fall out, nobody can see you, go ahead and play. It's perfect. Our body quite, quite literally trains balance by learning how to fall and then balance the next time. 
your brain is getting all these little signals from our muscles on how to correct. So like when we stretch, or excuse me, when we do weightlifting, our muscles adapt to heavier weights. When we do balance, our body adapts to more unstable situations. So unless we're on occasion challenging these balances, our body has no reason to progress. So these are so good for our overall health and life. Coming on up and shaking it on out. Give yourself a nice big hug, a little shake out through the legs. So good team, let's go ahead and stretch back up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And let's go ahead and bring it all the way to our belly. Such good work, team. <sighs> Starting to find the last part of our practice together, bringing the shoulders, or excuse me, hands underneath the shoulders, feet about as wide as the mat, squeezing the glutes, nice deep inhale, exhale. Start to squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze the butt, press the toes into the floor, keeping the glutes tight so that we can have safe stretch in this back line. <sighs> Chin is down. Maybe play around with floating those elbows by squeezing the shoulder blades down and back. <sighs> One more nice deep breath in. And on your exhale, set the right ear to the mat, extend the arms long, little shake out through the hips. <sighs> Beautiful. Bringing the forehead to the mat. You are more than welcome to stay with baby cobra, which is what we just did. Otherwise, feel free to start to interlace the palms behind your back for a little kid's pose. Palms connecting, shoulders down the back, squeeze the butt, start to pull the fists away from the upper body, creating that lift in the spine, and then start to point the toes as hard as you can away from the body. So rather than just thinking of lifting the body up, Really think of extending and reaching for that back wall. Squeezing through the glutes, breathing chin to chest. One more nice deep inhale, fly, exhale, slowly lower, left ear to the mat, little rock out through the hips, maybe bend the legs. Windshield wipers. We have one more variation. You are welcome to stay with either of the two we set up. They are both wonderful. If you have any history of low back pain, I'm gonna suggest that you stick with baby cobra or locus. But if you'd like to explore a flying bow, start to kick your heels towards your butt, forehead down, reaching for the tops of your feet. Squeeze the butt like crazy. Shoulders are down our back. And on your next exhale, start to kick the feet into the hands. So this position is created by squeezing the feet away from the palms, the palms holding on, and that creates our bow shape. Think of inner thighs squeezing together energetically so our legs aren't splaying, glutes are tight. Nice deep inhale here, keep kicking the hands away. And exhale, slowly release, beautiful rocket side to side. Start to stretch your fingers out, and just like we talked about all the way back at the beginning, every pose has its counter pose, knees together, stretching the arms out or bringing them along your side. When we do back bends, it's such a beautiful way to strengthen through our back line, which is so important for our day-to-day -day posture. But too much of a good thing, as we know. So we always meet those postures with their partner, which in this case is that forward fold. Again, as we're coming here towards the close of our practice, allowing child's pose, this introspective shape where we're literally tuning out the world around us to start bringing it back to the breath. And if we got disconnected, bringing it back to the mind. Noticing if we have any sort of lingering judgment about our balances or maybe we're really feeling good about our balances. Both positive and negative emotions happen all the time. And right now we're just working on starting to detach from them and return to that nice neutral center, that balance. Starting to extend the hands forward, coming up through tabletop, stretching the legs forward, reaching past our toes, big stretch, and then slowly one vertebra at a time, lowering all the way down onto our back. 
walking the feet in towards our hips, stretching for the back of our heels with our fingertips, toes straight forward, scooping the tailbone, thinking top of the bottom of the ribs, top of the hips, finding a glute bridge. Option here to interlace the hands and walk the elbows and shoulders underneath the body. Heels dragging down towards the glutes, feeling a stretch in the top of those hips. Inner thighs hugged together like you're holding a yoga block. Feeling the heart expand, the hips expand, all these emotional centers just start to release. More nice deep inhale and on the exhale, if the shoulders are under, slowly roll to one side and then the other. Knees hugging into chest for that balancing counter stretch. And then just gently guide the legs softly to the left. Right shoulder pins, maybe taking the right or the eyes to the gaze to the right. Never forcing, just allowing the body to be exactly where it is right now. Noticing if we can soften both physically and mentally. Start to feel our limbs and our bones start to get a little bit heavier. On our next inhale, we hug the legs up and across and exhale over to the other side. Shoulders are pinning both to the ground, eyes over to the left and again, just allowing allowing that softness. I know I say this all the time, but in worlds that are so busy in our day to day, sometimes allowing softness and stillness to enter into our space can be the most challenging part of a yoga practice. And it can take exactly that. It can take practice. So if you find yourself getting frustrated because you can't just let all thoughts evaporate. I promise you that will never be the case. So let go of that standard and expectation. And instead, we work on just allowing that detachment from our thoughts. Our brains are busy. That's part of what keeps us alive. But how do we allow that evolutionary function of inner chatter to detach from the way we feel when we move through our days? In this stillness, that's when we practice becoming the observer. One more nice deep inhale as you bring the legs through center, taking a moment to find anything that feels good. Maybe playing with happy baby, maybe finding a shoulder stand, whatever it is your body is asking for. A couple rounds of breath here just to play and to listen and to intuit giving ourselves a moment to really connect one last time. In breath here, just to play and to listen and to intuit. Giving ourselves a moment to really connect one last time into ourselves. Starting to come back when you're ready, bringing both arms around the legs, big breath in, forehead to the knees, give yourself a little kiss, tense everything up so tight, face, Toes, fingers, deep inhale, big tension. And then exhale, letting it go into your final Shavasana. Arms and legs wide, take up space. Really allowing yourself here those moments of maximum softness. Letting your practice settle into that muscle memory letting your mind settle. Allowing this to be a reminder for when we leave our mats later, that even something as simple as 60 to 90 seconds of stillness and breathing can have an incredibly beneficial effect on our nervous system. All too often when I'm talking to clients about different self-care practices, the same, ex not excuses, but the same reasoning applies as to why they can't practice them right now. And it's always, I just don't have time right now. I just don't have time. I'm really busy. My family needs me. 
work is crazy. I wish I could, I just don't have time. And I catch myself with that reasoning all of the time. Which is why moments like this in Shavasana are such beautiful, gentle reminders that even if we feel like we couldn't possibly spare any bit of our time, we can always take 60 seconds just to breathe. And the cool thing that happens when we start to take this time and show up for ourselves is that almost like magic, we start to create more space in our lives. We start to harness that inner anxiety that tells us we have to go, 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 and we just can't get it done. And we start to let go of that constraint and show ourselves that not only do we have time, but by debunking that in our thought pattern, and by releasing the amount of time we spend on that anxiety, we've suddenly created this space for ourselves. And that to me is balance. When we become aware of things that we spend so much of our time and attention on, and just like we clean our homes, we start to let go and notice first and then start to let go of those thoughts and spirals that don't serve us. And in fact, eat up our time. You are welcome to stay in your Shavasana as long as you like. But if you're ready to come on out and start your day, to start bringing this practice of balance into everything we get to do off the mat, to finding ease and gentleness, accepting that both wonderful things and terrible things happen all the time, and it's all these spaces in between that really make up life. Practicing this even keel in between space. Letting it be a practice, not perfect. Little wiggles in your fingers and your toes. Start to deepen the breath, maybe take the arms overhead for a good morning stretch. When you're ready, rolling to one side or the other, starting to reset back into the rest of your day. But while we're here, just one more gentle reminder that we can pause. Keeping the eyes closed, lifting up into an easy seat position, allowing both sits bones to connect to the floor. And on our inhale, we stretch the arms up, fingertips connect, pulling the hands to heart center. Gently bowing your head, taking one final inhale full of gratitude for you and your amazing body showing up for this practice today. Exhale, letting it go. The light and the teacher in me honors, respects, and loves the light and the teacher in me. Thank you again, Raiders, for showing up for this practice. I wish you all a balanced, beautiful life. Namaste. Namaste.